Strong start from Sitsipas. Nice clean return. Love I doubt whether you'll see too many block returns from him tonight. He doesn't generally like to do it anyway, but particularly against Nadal, that doesn't feel as though it will be a particularly great strategy. Nadal beginning his 13th Australian Open quarterfinal. Only Federer with 15 last eight appearances and John Newcomb with 14 have had more than the Spaniard. Do not confuse him as just a great clay quarter. He has been <laughs> phenomenal on hard as well. This will be a key battleground. What Tsitsipas does on Nadal's second serve. strength to generate that power up high on the back end. One hander from Sitsa Pass. You need to be very strong to hit that because Rafa's ball is getting up, kicking like a mule up onto your backhand wing. And uh, he very nearly pulled that one off. That's the shot he'll go for. serve it'd be easy for Sitsipas to have a real crack at it and try to make inroads early in the rally but the left-handed option gives it makes it a little more complicated That's your... if you do have a crack at the serve early and threaten on it though it can cause a little bit of indecision from the server That's not an indication of anything being too wrong with his back. He's been averaging 155 Ks in the tournament. You can see from the speed gun at the back there, that was just 143. Out. 14. 13. We'll see a lot of serves into that backhand tonight on the juice side. Nadal is going to be looking for a central return, and it's going to be important for the, the Spaniard to just change it up occasionally, I think, when he's ahead in the score on his service games into the forehand on the yep. juice side, just to keep Sitsipas honest. And it is going to be a test of his accuracy on his second to keep it tight to the line, because there's just not as much flexibility in a single-hander from that position on the court on the return. Okay, no, no. Super aggressive looking return there. But it finds the net, and Nadal finds himself one love up, and I think Colin Fleming has found himself a nice seat. Oh. Gee, that ball got up, didn't it? I mean, it's coming down from a great height. We know that. He's Did that catch a thermal? <laughs> That was, a, that was a super ball, hit the, hit the surface and took off, and Rafa wrapped it around the frame. That really got up high. Wow. Oh. strong from sets of pass. It's going to be interesting to watch Nadal's core position here for his no. return because, I mean, that one as well, Fitzy, it got did. up incredibly high. Yep. The racket face of Nadal is up high here to make the return than normal, up above his head here to make contact. Look how far he went inside the baseline. Good job he's been practicing that through the tournament. Be pretty tough to make that type of adjustment. 
he's either going to decide, I think, as this opening set rolls through, whether standing in and yeah. trying to take that on the rise is better than him dropping really deep and just ripping. And he looks like he's back a little deeper this time. Maybe not for the second serve as well, but certainly yeah, for that one. What, I, what I'm looking forward to seeing here is how aggressive Tsitsipas is against the Nadal serve, especially the second serve, because what he doesn't want is to play a neutral type of ball without much pace on it, straight back down the middle of the court. As you said, Rafa will back away and dictate the point straight away with his forehand. So that's the reason why Tsitsipas will be aggressive on the return, and he won't mind missing the odd one. But he, what he doesn't want to do is let Rafa dictate to him on the first rally point. So he'll be aggressive here again. Oh. So it's about standing almost on an angle, trying to give himself uh, opening his shoulders here. Well, he won't like the free point that he just gave, but it won't stop him from teeing off on a few of these. Not, well, not teeing off. That's the wrong terminology, I think. Being aggressive. He's not going to throw all caution to the wind, but he will want to be the guy pressing early against the Nadal service. This is, this is where you feel as though Rafa could start changing up his angle of attack on the juice side in particular going to the forehand yeah just to just to keep him honest he, it just depends on how he's feeling about his serve right now whether he feels that he wants to do this or he keeps plugging away a little longer there he went there well, that, that's his least favorite serve though isn't it? on both sides to the right hander's forehand he prefers to fade it into the back end wing it's safer for him when he gets ahead in the game he's more likely to go f for the one out to the forehand Case in point, Mark, you know, if, if you float a ball back in the middle of the court, you're either going to be instantly defending or you're going to lose the point like this. But he's processing everything well. 30 love serves his first, second serve out to the forehand. He's, he's just setting Sitsipas up for the whole match. Strong hold from the Spaniard. Been a good fun three games to watch. Two one. Good success since he turned 30 as well. Of course, he's looking to win his seventh Grand Slam title since he turned 30. They're just not quite settled in yet. A few serves have been a little rushed, the ball toss a little low, and not quite catching the ball in return yet. I have to say, it's a pass. It's really getting the second serve to jump. I'm sure Raf will start to settle in, start to start the points a little bit stronger. Yeah, you're right, Colin. I mean, in terms of players that Raf has played as well. This is a very different style of serve coming in here today as well that he's actually going to have to make some sort of adjustment to. We normally talk about the adjustment that every player has to make when they play Nadal, but this is a, a tricky one for him, clearly at the start of this match. Game. Two games on. And I think that's a little bit of a key to holding serve Easily when he can, sits a pass. It allows him to 
be a bit freer and swing against the Nadal serve, which is not the biggest aspect of his game, is it? The, especially the second serve. So good signs from the Greek. Early to pass is moving. Interesting to see actually 30 all juice points where actually whether Rafa decides that he wants to take the risk to go and exploit the space that he's mm -hmm. given him. <laughs> Why well, stolen that away? He did. <laughs> Gee, that's uh, athleticism at its best. I mean, I thought he was gone for all money in this point, Sitsipas. But look at the defense and quickness for a big man and strength at the end of that range. He got something on that. That surprised Rafa. Caused the error. Dahl's only lost 10 points when he's come to the net out of 56 when he's been there. Clinical, usually. I see a turn for me, guys. I'm not sure I see much of a future in Sitsipas trying to hit that first serve return from out wide. I mean, obviously, if he blocks it and doesn't get enough on it, he's going to get a tap. But that was there was absolutely nothing on that meat and drink for Nadal there. Was that was that meat 13, and drink? 15. Is that is that is that Scottish for having a good time? Haggis, neeps and tatties. Yeah, that'll <laughs> do for me. <laughs> Not found that in Melbourne yet. Meat and drink. You okay. have to be careful on who's playing. Otherwise, you've got to do vegan and drink, gluten-free and drink. <laughs> Wants to the one dictating, doesn't he? Sits a pass. That's a pre-game plan to not Good be job. the defender here. He wants to be the aggressor. And I think, why not? You have to be against Rafa. You don't want him taking it to you. Of course, this advantage of being tall doesn't just help him with his serve, but also for the ball that does bounce up from Nadal, that he's able to take it at a relatively comfortable height. There, there you go. 14. So he has to go there sometimes, Mark, doesn't he? And, that, and for him, that's a higher risk serve. He wants to go more to the, the middle of the court, but because Sitsipas is behaving the way he is and looking for that backhand, down the middle on the 30 all point or the first point of the game. He takes a little bit of a risk and this time it pays off. Not that he can't serve it well, just that he'd prefer to go for the other one. Game another. Well, that was a little bit of a test and he's come through it effectively enough. But once again, guys, he's getting that second serve. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone in the tournament get it to jump that high, getting it short in the box. Nadal's hitting backhand smashes almost. It's true. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> ah. 
Et finalement. Of course, he's been to the semi-finals here at the Australian Open before, has hit a pass. So I always think the more you knock on the door, eventually it'll open. He's had the experience. That'll stand him in good stead in a situation like this. Fifteen, thirteen. That forehand had a, a nervy feel to it to me. Just didn't let the racket go, didn't get the necessary cover. He's put himself under some pressure now. Thought he did extremely well to defuse the situation off the return. One big difference between these two has been the quality of their backhands throughout the course of this tournament. Almost double the number of winners coming from Nadal compared to Sitsipas. You could see how hard Apostolos' son was working to keep his forehand in play there. Oh, yeah, that forehand can hurt you, can't it? It's a good weapon, Sweet. and uh, he finishes with the with the overhead smash that just showcases his athleticism. Sits a pass. The contact point on his forehand is so good as well. I mean, he gets nice, easy pace, but it's so early inside the baseline. It's actually a little bit slower than Rafa's at 126 k's, but I think it's the ability to take it so early that catches you unawares as well. Here, that this is Sitsipas's chance to pounce. Balls at their oldest. A little extra time. There you go. I should, I should let you explain uh, your reasoning there, Mark, because it's obvious. You know, you, you talked about it earlier. You're dead right. I was surprised he went there at Love All, but because he knows that if he hits it tight to the center line, he's getting a, a central return back to it, and he's going to get his forehand into play. Felt like quite an unnecessary risk to get himself off to a love 15 deficit. On the second serve? Yeah. yeah. It's not as though Sitsipas is hitting clean winners off that backhand return on the juice side at the moment. I, I'm not totally convinced that his back's OK. Interesting you mentioned that, Pitch, because I'm just going to ask you guys how are the list of numbers looking, because down here at courtside, the rhythm to me is completely off. Quite a few where the, the ball toss is too low, so he's not, not getting the necessary extension. I mean, that last first serve must have missed by maybe two and a half, three metres long. Um, so he really is looking out of sorts on the serve at the moment. What about the movement, Colin? I've not noticed anything there, Fitzy, but... Keep an eye on it. Definitely for me, the, the serve at the moment not looking as good as it has been. Yeah, I mean, obviously, 
came in here last year with a slightly modified service motion, a little taller, doesn't rotate quite as much as he used to, trying to keep the pace through the court. I've just been looking at the one out wide, particularly on the ad side. He's he's sort of average so far in this opening set, around 170 Ks, which I'm trying to find out if that's been the norm for the tournament so far. There's a much better Thank rhythm you. there. You're absolutely spot on pitch, you know, the adjustments he made. Slightly less knee bend, isn't it? Quicker yep. out of the load. But it just looked a little too quick at times tonight, whether that's the back or whether it's just sometimes you start a match and you don't quite have your rhythm, do you? But let's keep an eye on it. between these two. Phenomenal use of the court. 14, 13. I guess at times it feels like you've got to beat Rafa at his own game, don't you? Because this is what he loves. But, gee, sits a pass looks strong from the back of the court as well. And he, he made Rafa come up with a, with a heck of a finish here. This is tight, this first set. A lot of 30-all games, isn't there? Oh. Well, that was just looking a little dicey for Nadal at the start of that service game, but he escapes with some wonderful play. 4-3 on Nadal serve. Let's go out on a limb here, because it feels as though it should help the server with a big serve like this. I'll go with the break. He's already shown his prowess at the net, hasn't he? He's, he doesn't volley like Stefan Edberg yet, but he's uh, improving all the time at the net, and he's he's got a huge reach, tough to get past. And the depth there won him the point. His movement's super dynamic at the net as well. He covers the ground, he moves and closes the net down so well with big strides, not little strides. So, you know, there's, there's so many that he I, does well. I, I think a bird's just got him on the shirt now. Oh, we just got a delay. There was a, a fair number just flew across this Rod Laver Arena. Isn't that supposed to be good luck if they get you? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I can come to terms with that, Cole. It seems like bad luck to me. I might have to put the shirt into dry cleaning if I get <laughs> struck <laughs> down here tonight. This is where Sitsipas is so good on those kind of shorter returns. There's a real premium as we see uh, the offenders up there. We He's call them seagulls here. Oh. Depth on Rafa's return, crucial. He's dropped back here. Oh, excuse me. 13. Well, that takes not just pinpoint accuracy but the power to get that ball back across from deep behind the baseline way back I think the new ball helped there pitch because it probably goes from A to B a little quicker than the than the older ball I think the court position helped him as well by dropping deep
interesting as well. This is a bit of a test for Sitsipas today because he but actually he prefers to go more down the line with his forehand and then back into his backhand corner to use his forehand. It's almost close to a 40%. He goes sort of cross court and 60% down the line. But you would say tonight that that is not a good pattern for him to go into Nadal's forehand that often. So he's going to have to change a little bit. Did he have a sixth sense there, Colin? I mean, he literally looked like he knew Sitsipas was going to serve and volley. Yeah, just uh, 13, an incredible 14. return from Nadal. Felt like he just ready for that wide serve in particular. And interesting for me, he seems to have just adjusted that return position, like you said, first and seconds, moving back. We saw some serves jumping up above his head early on. So he's just willing to move back, make sure he gets enough on the return. And he's created a big chance here. how he can see the opponent coming when he hasn't served a volley for the entire match to that stage. Game another. Well, that is the majestic Nadal at his very best there on return. Yeah, for me, that was brilliant from Nadal. The, the ability these great players have to adjust their tactics so quickly in a match, you know, he's trying to take the returns early at the start of the set, wasn't getting anything on the ball. And then, of course, if you do take it early, you're so exposed, you can't cover the space. Moving back, giving himself time, much more of a kind of clay court strategy, if you want, and just, yeah, just drawing the errors out of it's past there. Brilliant adjustment. Can't ask for more himself there to respond to that kind of adversity. That was rapid from Sitsipas to get behind that ball to be able to drive through it in that way. with new balls you know logic says that it would suit sits a pass to me but Rafa stands back with new balls probably has a bit more margin for error than most because of it and and sits a pass is still trying to stand up in the court and attack and the ball's just flying a little bit more so he's come up with some errors here that he hadn't in the games just prior he met that beautifully though when Rafa serves into that hitting zone, Sitsipas doesn't have to swing too hard there. Off the first serve anyway, it just came in beautifully and he met it with strength. It was one of yours, Fitzy, wasn't it? Really solid racket head, solid wrist. Right through the ball, redirecting it. You've got him reminiscing now, Colin. Oh. I mean, he's probably not going to be able to speak for the next 15 minutes while he's... Mate, that's a can of worms. But he's just... He's embarrassing me because he knows that my velocity off the racket was nothing like that. Oh. So but he, he's going to the forehand well, isn't he? I mean, this is, you know, don't, don't ever underestimate their IQ along with their talent and their dedication and their sacrifice and all of the th combination of things that goes into making a great champion. I mean, watch the intellect that's yeah. on display here. A little bit of chess happening. Well, the trajectory over the net is just producing so much more margin for error. It's a 
It's a trait that Nadal's had his whole career. It's a major reason why he wins at Roland Garros with that convex shaped court. The net appears high. He's got the height over the net and safety is written all over his ground strokes. Set point. Ah! That was an absolute for set for connoisseur seven. set of tennis from Rafael Nadal. Beautiful to watch. Beautifully crafted and ultimately successful. 6-3. Looks like a risky shot because he's missed it, but it's actually one of his favorite shots, which is why he's going to pull the trigger when he's in that kind of position to tip pass. And ultimately tonight will come down to how well he executes. Nadal doing a little bit more work at the back of the court, as you can see there. 13, 15. Obviously, had run quite a bit more coming into this particular match because Sitsipas had the the retirement from Berrettini before they even took to the court. Genius. Well, that's well, a forehand masterclass, guys. I mean, you had the big bomb inside out. You had the high heavy, the little whip short ones, the top shot. Doesn't get any better than that. And I don't think anyone expected that. No. Made me jump in my seat when he hit that. <laughs> Especially the person that needed to expect it. <laughs> he clearly didn't. <laughs> Such variety yeah. from Nadal on the forehand side. It's not enough. You just can't give Nadal time on either wing. 13, 14. So as much as it's it's a normal play to so many to just chip that down the line and come in against Nadal, it is dangerous. If you give him time, that's not a difficult shot for him. He makes it look easy for most of us. It's a tough shot, but for him, run of the mill. So true, Fitzy. This is not a run-of-the-mill service game here at the start of the second for Sitsipas. Oh, this okay. is just gorgeous to watch. Nadal at his absolute best. Out. Big couple of points here Lovely. already. That just st stolen away by Sitsipas. Wasn't the great pass from Nadal. And he needs to recover that break quite quickly here. Things have unraveled in the last 20 minutes for the Greek superstar.
This is first class. Six star tennis, really. I mean, Tsitsipas there threw he, he everything he had at him. He hit his back end as hard as he could hit it, trying to out hit Nadal. He not only he not only absorbed that power from Tsitsipas, but then he opened the court at him, up himself and showed his all court versatility there. He's really on top of his game at the moment. Last 20, 25 minutes have been exceptional. Can't tell under those masks. Oh, yeah, you've got one one member of the party having a giggle. They're pretty happy right now. They know he's playing well. Oh. in against the forehand there with his forehand down the line he's got to go more for the line you can't you can't hit that a meter inside the sideline and two meters short of the base on Rafa's forehand it's just too it'll hurt you too much yeah especially the, the form Rafa's in right now as you said Fitzy in the last 15 20 minutes absolutely phenomenal and the movement even at this stage of his career it's just off the charts so physical so dynamic so powerful You're not getting a man crush down there, Colin, are you? If he keeps this up, I tell you what. <laughs> oh, that's what he's having to do, really. He's got to go nuclear. And Nadal just with one of those beautiful sort of rainbow shaped forehands just sort of putting it in a place for a single hander that is just so difficult to hit a winner. He's got a bit more spin on that side than team and Federer as well who are able to flatten that out a bit more. So if you put Federer in these shoes tonight, uh, the difference between him and Tsitsipas, it's the forehand, isn't it? Do you think? I mean, Federer's forehand can hurt you a bit more than what we're seeing from Stefano's tonight. I mean, it's a tough comparison, but, uh, but you know, when Federer goes head-to-head -head with Nadal these days, or up until COVID, I mean, I think the forehand's a better shot, no question from Roger. His ability to take the ball kind of consistently on the half volley, um, I think, you know, is one thing. It creates his a serve, bit more angle to His it. serve is better than Sitsa Passes as yep, well. Yep, More importantly. I would like to argue that his, uh, his slice is significantly better as well. Yeah. So to be able to stay neutral when that, you know, high heavy artillery is coming into his backhand, Sisabas is continuing to try and take the ball on and the rise, which... So no variety there, Colin. Yeah, I, do, I think he could slice a few. He could maybe even back off a couple and hit high heavy himself back, just throw something different with a view to trying to be proactive, but it doesn't have to be in the first one that comes in. Good second serve, good second service game, unfortunately for Tsitsipas right now. He's a breakdown in the second, having dropped the first. And the 
icing on the cake for everybody, of course. We will have fans back tomorrow as well. Lockdown in Melbourne being released. 7,477 spectators will be allowed in for each session. <laughs> Seven and a half thousand alternatives to me tomorrow. Okay, so that didn't bring a smile to your face. <laughs> Never. <laughs> uh, I've got less than two weeks left with you, Fitzy. <laughs> I'll go into a, a minor depression. <laughs> In those two weeks or after post? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I'll, I'll take my fifth. Good is that. Talked about his length being impeccable this year compared to last year. And that is exhibit A. Well, I don't quite know what I'd tell Sitsipas at this stage except to sh sh use a little bit more variety because this is not working. He's hitting that as well as he can hit it across court into the forehand, which we talked about. You've got to attack into that forehand wing, you think, to open up Nadal a little bit. But it's, no, it's not working tonight. He's just, can you believe he hit a cold winner off that backhand? I mean, what would you tell him? Chip a few low and short? Serve and volley a bit. He's already been burnt there. bit of speed off a couple of those that's what Colin was suggesting maybe just take a bit off them yeah he's Something giving different. him one piece Fitzy um, that forehand there he just whether it was slightly miss hit or not but it just had a little bit more shape more revs than the ball less pace and um, Medal missed time whenever a player is in a rhythm like this you've got to try and change it don't mm -hmm. you? different spins different heights different speeds just trying shake them out of it. It's all about one pace from Sitsipas. He's hitting through every single backhand at the moment. Use a little bit of slice, use some height. I guess try to take a, a note out of Federer's book and use that variety, but uh, certainly going hard and fast on every ball is not working right now. Yeah, and you saw that return there. I mean, he actually hit it okay, but he's got absolutely no time to cover the space. Yeah, he maybe got to go deep with a slice, buy some time, get into the point. But he's, uh, Gee, he's stubborn. Gee, Nadal, though, he hurts guys when they don't slice well enough too, doesn't he? It's a bit of a dangerous ploy with him. 14. You don't want to overplay the slice against Rafa. I mean, you look at Roger's success recently has come because he's taken the slice pretty much out of the equation. I mean, certainly on the second serve, he never hits a slice at zero, and it, the down to about 4% on the first serve. I mean, he, he plays an erratic style now against Rafa. He doesn't give him rhythm. But, but, he, but he does slice a bit during the rally. Occasionally, not, not too much. Not a lot. <laughs> Sissa Pass is a little bit further back in his stance as well for the return compared to Roger. Roger will be hugging the baseline here, cutting the angle off and just drilling it. And mm -hmm. listen, and then even then, it, it takes something special for him to get past Nadal in five sets and, 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 and be able to hang on. I mean, the reality is, is that you don't win 20 grand slams if there's a, a strategy that works against you consistently, because everyone would employ it. Well, he's got to also hope, it's a pass. I think that Rafa just comes down from this height a little bit. He's got to hang, 100%. In, there, hang in there long enough, see if the great man can just drop off a, a fraction, a few percentage points. Yeah, and the problem is, is you just get a little bit deflated. I mean, you're just a human being, aren't you? I mean, you're, you're playing well. 
Tsitsipas is playing pretty well, but it's only natural after another game like that that you start this one just with a miss hit, suddenly giving Nadal a little more incentive to get excited about trying to get a second break. You have to main perfection. You have to maintain perfection at all times, even in the face of adversity. That's what you get when you slice. I know it was short, it was too short. But if you slice to him, he immediately runs around to hit his forehand. And he's so quick with that movement, it's subconscious. He's been doing it since he was a little boy. Good news is you lose the point a bit quicker. <laughs> That's good news? Well, at least you don't have to go the agony of playing 20 shots to lose it. <laughs> Stunning footwork from Nadal. He is running riot out here right now. Oh. A lot of the winners from Nadal obviously coming into the forehand corner of Sitsipas, but yeah, he really has locked him up in his backhand corner and just thrown away the key, so to speak. I mean, the Sitsipas just he doesn't know how to get out of his checkmate, really. Yes, from Tsitsipas, startling tennis of his own there. But that, but that last forehand was just throwing caution to the wind. He, he flattened that out and just swung as hard as he could at this last one. And this is what it's taking right now to win a point against Nadal. That was actually a phenomenal shot, that. Flattened it out. High risk in that shot. just to get to 30 all. That's like heaven when Rafa misses one like that. If you're down the other end, it's a rare thing. When he does it, it's just a sigh of relief. Give me a free point. It's like Christmas. I mean, he hit that hard, deep, near the sideline. The only thing you can say is, well, did he go the wrong way? But it was as good a, as an, appro a, an approach as you could possibly hit, really, and loses the point. The goose step from Rafa, he's so confident. Wasn't really even balanced, and he belted a winner across court. as well and that is real trouble for Tsitsipas here yeah, it, to me he's showing signs of just being just not knowing what to do now and you can't blame him this is an onslaught Adal just standing waiting wasn't he for the approach to come into the backhand after the, the previous forehand winner he's got his number wasn't he Okay. 
Well, he's controlling the ball within the rectangle so beautifully tonight, and there is no answer from his opponent currently. It is 4-1, double break in the second to Nadal. That return was just lacking a bit of belief for me. No surprise. As you guys have alluded to, this is uh, this has been brutal on Sitsipas Nadal. Absolutely brilliant, giving him absolutely nothing. It's been interesting to see actually Thank just how love. well Nadal has returned the first service to pass out here. He's, he's not having his best night by any stretch. Sitsipas is usually uh, above 60% of first serves in. He's at 55 for the match, but he's winning just 57% of his first serves when they've gone in. It's low. 14. We talked about Rogers serving against Nadal. I mean, you look at the the last five matches that he's sort of well, yeah, the last five matches he's won. He's won 75 percent, 76 percent, 76 percent, 87 and 83 percent of his first serve points. Federer when he's taken on Nadal. Everything he's got, sorry, Colin, he's thrown everything he's got, hasn't he, at uh, Nadal so far, and it, 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 he's come up with nothing. Nadal and it, now he's just starting to spray the ball a fraction. Yeah, absolutely right. Nadal's broken him down, hasn't he? And you mentioned how well Nadal's done on return. No one's served Nadal. You mentioned early on he's using that wide serve, which is higher risk for him. He's now able to just go into the backhand whenever he wants and, and get the reward. It's low risk, high return. Wouldn't mind taking those odds to the casino. And the bad news is, too, that uh, Nadal, but th this momentum change happened when the new balls came out at 4 3 in the first set. The bad news is there's more new balls next game. Well, an impressive forehand. You have to give credit where credit's due there. Just Well, he won't get that luxury on a big point, though. Nadal won't be that close to the baseline. That's right. Yeah, in other words, he's experimenting a fraction right now. Yep. It's just giving him another different look, just something else to change things up. Sl trying to snap off a quick winner. No Such rhythm a ahead of the next big game, which is, of course, for Nadal to seal the set. With new balls. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss for Nadal. But his aim has been dead straight tonight so far. Ruth, yes. 5-2, second set. Wood with. And how great is it, guys, for everyone involved that we're going to have the crowd back in from semi-finals onwards. Colin, you won't have to whisper quite as much down there. There'll be some more atmosphere. <laughs> He's like whispering Jack down there. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Just trying to avoid the uh, evil death stare from either player here. <laughs> we dropped in. Love 15. He knows how to break him. He's uh, certainly achieved that before in his career. 
But right now, it remains a theory in his mind. Can he start to change things around here? It's a pass. There's a lot of theorists in tennis. There's a lot of theory in tennis, yeah. A lot of theorists. What are the odds? What, what are the numbers when, when uh, Raf has won two sets? Two sets to love in a Grand Slam match? I mean, it's it's two, 200 something and one yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. So that, that's the odds that Sitsipas is facing here now, really. Well, I don't think it's like that tonight, but it's but they're the numbers that Raf has got when he leads two sets to love. flamboyant and it was fierce but unfortunately for him it just failed well he made a decision there that he may as well just give it the giraffe kick give it the flamboyancy to try and finish the point because he couldn't he couldn't do it in a normal fashion not easy to hit that shot when you're in the air and off balance That would tickle Nadal's fancy to see that. 14, He's maintained his superiority. Yep. He's maintained his focus. It's been a master class, hasn't it, these two sets? Wow. So extends his lead. Two sets to love it is for the second seed. But Novak is still in the draw. And by the way, Medvedev's in his half, and I think if there's only the odd player that can beat Novak, I think. This man's one of them. Although he was he was hammered here two years ago with some of the best tennis we've ever seen by Novak in the final. And I think Medvedev, maybe he's the other. Off Nadal is to get his 21st Grand Slam title here. What a way to do it. Sits a pass, followed by Medvedev, followed by probably Djokovic. That sounds pretty good to me. Well, we don't want to uh, we don't want to assume that sits a pass is not going to win a set here and or the match. For instance, we don't want to be philosophizing too much. He's such a good player. He's got his back against the wall. No one can deny that. He needs to produce something special here, Stefanos. Keeps changing things up, doesn't he, Nadal? Look at that. Down the line to start the match with, going cross court more as he's got more comfortable. Game to Tibas. First game, third set.
Wow. It's not possible to hit the first shot after the serve any better. Well, you, you know that you're just overflowing with confidence when you hit this nonchalantly. This is an extremely difficult tennis shot. Yeah. Gee, the points are short now too, aren't they? They are. Mm. Game mm. Great serving. One he did not want to give his opponent any respite from his brilliance, and he certainly didn't there. Of course, he was brilliant in that semi-final, wasn't he, in 2019. Tsitsipas expecting much after he had knocked out Federer. Came away with just six games. Quality from Sitsa Pass. Yeah, and it's important that Sitsa Pass just keeps his nose in front in this third set, doesn't he? Try and keep holding on. You never know, get to a tie break, nick it. Came on again at two sets to one, but it feels quite far away at the moment. Just potentially a little lull here for Nadal. I mean, he has been so good, hasn't he? Changed tactics in the first point, just moved very deep in the court, had a couple of slices, so perhaps just uh, catching his breath again. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Certainly felt that, but a couple of good service holds here at the start for City Pass. Something to build on, perhaps, for the fifth seed. Does that change the rhythm of Nadal? Probably not, but he's got to try something. Yeah, I think I think the one thing he has to do is, as you say, keep taking care of his serve. The longer he's out here, if he can push the clock past two hours, the best chance he has of Nadal losing a little bit of the form that we're seeing right now. I mean, honestly, there was nothing wrong with that slice. He was pushed back and wide by the brutality of the, of the Nadal forehand to go wide here, but nothing wrong with this slice. Deep, right into the corner, and look at that shot. The only thing I would ask, uh, guys, about that slice, it feels to me, I'm sitting courtside, so maybe a little difficult to see it. You're behind the court, but he's hitting that slice down the line from pretty wide in the court. So there is a big gap to the mm. forehand. I'd like to see him maybe use it from a 
a slightly more central position, break the rhythm, and you know he's he's got a better court position. Most of the museums are shut in Melbourne tonight, but this particular art gallery is open. I mean, that was a work of art. I mean, this is art. This is art and craft. Game another. Two against him. I mean, the door hasn't even been ajar, has it, for City Pass? He hasn't even been able to test its hinges yet tonight on the Nadal serve, yet to create a breakpoint opportunity. And again, the pressure that puts on you as a competitor, where you know you're not really getting any opportunities to figure out a route back into the match, just really is a problem. We shouldn't forget how, how difficult it is to, in reality, to maintain this level for three straight sets. It's hard. You know, two sets, yes. But three straight, it's at this high level. You think a player would come yeah. off the boil slightly at some stage. And I think that's a fair observation. I mean, Connors, who I've also worked with in the, in the commentary booth, I asked him that, how many perfect matches did you play in the course of your career? And Jimmy obviously won over 1,200 matches. He said five. Oh, he said five. I was going to say, Jimmy might say zero, because he, <laughs> he was a tough taskmaster on himself, probably. Yeah, five. OK. Well, that's how hard it is to win a point at the moment for Stefanos. He's got to be prepared to go through some of that pain, though, and perseverance and patience, I think. Credit to him for doing it there. Yep. But to get his teeth into it a little bit here in this third set and try to steal this third set, it's going to probably need that, isn't it? Plenty of backbone on show here from Sitsipas in this third set. Let me. First service. Oh, choosing possibly the wrong one in retrospect, just a little bit off balance there, and, and that is a low percentage shot. Change that direction. Remember, the ball's bouncing up from the Nadal spin. You have to change the direction, go down the line over the high part of the net. Easy to spray that one wide. Has to be patient. Change up serve. 
from Sitsipasa on the second there. 200 Ks coming in. Third hold of the third set, 3 2. They will remain micro ambitious. Probably the best player ever to have done that as well, to play each point on its merits. You feel like he's going for more and more, Colin, down there, just because he's not winning points easily, just risking more? Yeah, you could probably make an argument for that. Part of me thinks he's still in that phase that you referred to in the second set, John, where he's just, he, I don't think he knows what to do. I really don't think he's got a tactic that he believes in and he's committed to. He's just, he's swinging at whatever comes at him at the moment. He's just been outplayed, so hasn't he? And the serving has been hugely impressive from Rafa. He's missed one first serve so far in this third set. It's getting better and better. And therefore, the problem's becoming more complicated for Tsitsipas. Well played, well watched, delightful finish. Got tested by another quality forehand from Nadal. Yeah. Pretty darn good approach shot, and he still had to hit a very good volley to win the point. Seen some of the finest examples of plus one forehands tonight. The shot right after the serve from both players. We talked about him needing to hold his serve. It does, you know, in some ways, if he can't get close to the Nadal serve. <laughs> well, if he can't get close to the Nadal serve, but can still continue to hold his own, he gives himself a chance here in this third. If he's got to win it in a breaker, so be it. Just chose the wrong approach there for me, coming in cross court, not able to make up the ground, and that's a big point here. If Nadal wins this one, things get very, very interesting. Well held. Could see Nadal moving out of his peripheral vision. 14. He's executing well in this game, it's a bass, and it's probably as relaxed as he's been in the match. I think he's so far behind in the score now that it's um, it's helping him in a way, just to let the the shots flow and go for it. Playing like he's absolutely got nothing to lose. Very serve dominated this third set, and it is 4 3 City Pass. City Pass leads four games to swing.
supremacy from the back of the court at times has just been simply breathtaking. The game, the two-hander down the line. Okay, you expect him to make it, but it's the pace and the accuracy that he's delivering it at. It's just keeping yeah. Sitsipas neutralized. Yeah, and I mean, it wasn't the wrong choice, was it? I mean, to go across court, yeah, that's just logical. You go across there with a heavy topspin. You think, you think that you're going to get a reasonable shot at the next ball, not to be, not to be put totally on the defenses with defensive with one straight hit from Nadal. He's seeing the ball like a football. And that's the thing with the improvement in Nadal's backhand. It, it's not a safe part of the court now, is there? Um, there's, there's, it feels like there's nowhere Sitsipas can go yeah. that's even neutral. Exactly. Nadal's capable of attacking from everywhere in every direction, especially when he's playing this well. And that's a very claustrophobic feeling when you when you. You feel like there's nowhere to go. I think Connors is at the right. That you can just feel it, can't you? As a, you know, as a, a player that if, if you played the sport at all and don't know where to go and you get hurt from every direction, it's awful. In game, another. New bombs, please. 16 straight points in this set alone for Rafa Four on serve. Three. Interesting now. Talked about Sitsapas looking relaxed. He's kept his nose in front to four all, but you know, does the belief just peak again? You know, as we get to the business end of this set, the furthest he's been so far in this match. There's the tension grows, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think the pressure on Sitsapas is immense, isn't it? You can look at it and say he's got nothing to lose, but in his own mind, he's sitting there going, Well, if I make one bad choice here, I potentially lose my serve, and he's playing with that pressure in his mind the whole time now. He's got to be positive here, though, on his serve. Uh, like, if he, if he can get to 6-all, something can happen. The odds are <laughs> stacked against him, but if he loses his serve here, it's over. So, virtually over. So, he just play one at a time on his serve, see if he can get through this. He's got new balls, a lot of first serves in a play. Think about the positives. There's not many, but try to think of some right here. He's miserly, isn't he, on a tennis court? A generous soul who turns into a miser on the tennis court. Does not, just hates making a mistake, giving a free one away. That's so tough. So good, swept that away beautifully. Well, he's certainly clicked enthusiastically on the terms and conditions that you have to when you take on Nadal. Keeps on coming. 40 left. This is a positive thing from Sitsipas's point of view. Excellent hold. No Titi problems at all for Titi him to Titi. navigate through there. Nadal will come and serve to stay in the third. waiting for an out call from the electronic line system. It didn't come. Well, they forgot about the the left to right on the forehand, who, the spin that brings us back into court. And if you're this good, maybe you do try to hit it on the line. <laughs> no, I didn't. There you go. Oh, 
Magical. It's magical to watch. Another great point from the down. Something that's going against its as well. And look at the two at the moment. The down just looks so much fresher. He's done all the dictating, hasn't he? It's a crisis. Let me see, he's hanging around. Can't think about that at the moment. Fourteen. Oh, he managed to squeeze past Kokonakis in the second round, of course. Sissi Pass, that was a four hour, 32 minute epic. He did look a little jaded, understandably, at the end of that, but of course, got a pass, Mikko. Yimit in the third round, 6 4, 6 1, 6 1. And then the walkover, so you kind of felt that coming out here, he would be equally as fresh as Rafa. Just half an hour difference on court time for the two of them. But he could get that. A real burst of adrenaline here, Sissi Pass, if he can somehow figure out a way to drag himself across the finishing line here in the third set, grab it. It would appear his best chance will be through a tiebreaker. Again, not making any impact on that returning game. Feels like trouble. No, 15. Gee, it happens fast if that's the case. But it does. Sets a pass, take a bow. What a point to win. Could you feel the camel's back breaking with a straw there? It was possible, but this volley saved him. And it took it took an A grader. Look at that. As good a volley as you could make from there. Gutsy stuff. Really good to see. It's an unbelievable point, guys. I mean, the slice from the dial, where did that come from? Somehow sits a pass clinging on here. This is great stuff from the Greek man. This has been a brilliant run of three points. You have to say that second point of the game had a bit of everything. Exquisite defense from Nadal, and that was replicated by Sitsipas. Game 
game in Tsitsipas. Well, that game Tsitsipas deserves six games all the credit in the world. Magnificent from Tsitsipas, 6-5. It's an amazing difference. Three minutes 21. It took Nadal to hold on to his serve on average in the second set. Ripping through them here in the third. One minute 43 seconds. Beautiful. 14 left. Again, for me, is that defensive shot not going to go in the long diagonal deep? Hey. He's just really exposing himself there. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely brilliant from the doubt. There's been a number of times he's tried that slice line from a defensive position. He's just so exposed in the cross court. First point he's taken off the Nadal serve in this second set. Let for service. To a break, we go. Six games on. Done. The last set that Nadal lost at a major, of course, was on this court in a tiebreaker against Dominic Team here last year. Since then, he's won 35 straight sets. Streak, incidentally, on Nadal's serve was 27 straight points. Oh, he's got himself caught in no man's land there. Well, he was tempted to serve in volley, One, wasn't he? No, no. Just wasn't in quick enough to serve in volley. He just overran it. It's a mistake. It's a tactical error. Well, maybe, I think maybe he thought the serve was so good he might start moving forward and he just got caught. It's a, gee, bad error at the start of the breaker. It hurts. That's the first one we've seen for a long time. A missed Rafa Nadal smash. He just never Lost got, for words almost. He yeah, never got uncomfortable. Uh, sorry, never got comfortable under that high ball. You could just see him hustling. We are under the, the bright lights now. That was a very surprising miss still though. 
Surprised he didn't actually end up letting it bounce if he was struggling to pick it up. I mean, he was so close to the net. Would have been the simplest of overheads. Ah! He's so one. confident with the overhead, though. Maybe no, no. he just didn't give it a second thought. He thought, oh, I'll just, whatever he throws up, I'll hit, because I know I can make it. But you don't see that too often. Got a little interesting. Two on. First time tonight that Nadal hasn't been perfect. Tsitsipas so doing a great job of staying out here on court past the two hour mark. Precious few players probably would have been able to serve their way through the third set as effectively as he did. And maybe he's going to get his reward. This is what Three, I think. Two. Two, two, two. This is probably the most he could have hoped for. When early in the third set, he, he, he probably mentally couldn't think past. Well, can I just get myself to a tiebreak? Can I just get there and see what happens? Well, that's where he's at, and he is three-two up in this break. And now. It's real. Well, the change ends at 3 all here. For me, Nadal should have been four love up in, the, in this tie break. The overhead and, and the miss forehand, very surprising. And just giving sits a pass. A chance still, let's see what he can do. Yep, sometimes you've got to be throwing the lifeline. You don't just create one for yourself. And yep, Nadal just not quite his immaculate self in this tiebreaker so far. A tribute to his character that he's remained three all. He's kind of put it behind him. It's a pass in a slightly strange sort of place mentally at the moment. He's not radiating, uh, you know, that energy that looks like somebody that's defeated, and yet he's not really projecting an image of somebody that really genuinely believes he's going to turn this around. Ah. Ah. Wow. He's missed two smashes. Four, so there's a hiccup. Three. Two, two, plus. Great defensive lob by Sitsipas there. That was much more complicated, but still very surprising to see Nadal miss. He, he actually mishit the smash, which is why it flew long on him.
Well, he's fallible. 5 3. Titi Bus. Yeah, and even his mental fortress has been penetrated with the misses that he's had already in this tiebreaker. Opportunity knocks here for Tsitsipas. Oh. Wait, please. Nobody saw this coming, I don't think. And he's, Six his team are on their feet. He's, gonna, he's got the potential now to sneak a set from Nadal. And from there, you just don't know. Well, in Nadal's mind, this isn't done yet. He has been very dominant on serve in this third set prior to this tiebreaker. He could reel off these next two points, puts a lot of pressure on Sitsipas. He makes no mistake of the net this time. Six, four. Titipas. It's a tremendous triumph for his endeavours. Surprising, no question about it. The catalyst coming from the missed overhead from Nadal. But well played, Stefanos Tsitsipas. 7-6. Just changing a little bit, whereas he was catching the edge of the line all the way through the opening couple of sets, suddenly he's missing it by three millimetres. I just feel like Sitsipas's decision making has improved out here. He's now able to, you know, just remain a little bit calmer in the points. Not necessarily something that's easy to quantify, but it feels like he's making more better decisions. Thirteen, fifteen. First couple of sets just felt so open to me. That played into Nadal's hands. You know, it was high speed hitting, it was high risk hitting, not necessarily playing the the percentages. And um, I think he just settled down in that third set, particularly in the early stages. And like I say, thinking a little more clearly out here.
What a shot from Tsitsipas. And he is going from strength to strength. Brilliant from Tsitsipas. And I mentioned it a few times, guys. For me, that defensive slice was the right one. Deep cross court rather than down the line because when Rafa goes into the open space, at least that ball's going straight through the court rather than away from him. And he was able to counter. So that's an example for me of a, a better decision from Tsitsipas. An extraordinarily good shot from the Greek player there, though. Tough to pierce Nadal's defences from back behind the baseline like that. Wasn't going to make the same mistake twice as he did in the breaker in the third set. And he hurried up to that short ball as well. He couldn't afford to let it drop. Well, he never had a chance here, sits a pass, did he? The serve, the serve was too good. It set the point up. That was a much easier smash, that one, than the one he missed in the, in the tiebreaker. First break point of the match. How good is this? How good is this contest right now? Well, since the pass has grown an extra leg, as they say, he's he's putting in the big ones right now. He's lifted his standard. He's competing even more than he was earlier, it seems, if that's possible. Really lifted his intensity. It's awesome to see. Impressive hole to serve. First set, of course, he's lost in his last 35 that he had played. First service. This is what a young bull needs to do. He needs to challenge the old bull. It's a credit to Tsitsipas's yeah. tennis and ability to move that he is extracting this kind of tennis from the dial. Yeah, he's bringing the best out of him, really, isn't he? I mean, this, these defensive skills are high quality. Court coverage, control of that racket face to get it reasonably deep, but he can generate all his, his own speed, can Rafa, no doubt.
14 kicking. I think the freedom that Sitsipas is now playing with, there's, there's an extra depth on his shots. That's really helping him as well. Smashing the ball. Game Almost half volleying those Rafa forehands. One game. Hitting with freedom, isn't he? Can this be one of those defining moments? Well, he's had one before on here, hasn't he? When he beat Roger, of course, saving those 12 great points along the way. Massive win for him then. Long way to go. But he's, he's certainly trading blows, isn't he? Freewheeling at the moment is it's a pass. <laughs> Just got the one win against the top tenner at a major. That obviously was Roger. His pre other four. And bringing some new to proceedings as well, Nadal with the serve and volley. 2-1, fourth set to the Spaniard. Just cannot afford to leave it short like that now, Nadal. It's a pass is certainly free hitting. If, it, if it's short, he's going to go for it. There's nothing sure. And he should. Out. 13. It feels tighter now, doesn't it? It feels that he's in this match a little bit. Yeah, I was just going to say, interesting to see when uh, Nadal gets his rackets back. We're now a good four or five degrees cooler than when we started the match, and the ball isn't getting up anywhere near like it was at the beginning. Yeah, it's interesting watching Nadal even in this fourth set. He's definitely kind of moved a little bit closer to the baseline to try and sort of get the ball at the same height as he was in the, the previous couple of sets. The disability now to consistently get the ball out of the hitting zone of Sitsa Pass is, is more limited by the conditions, possibly why he's chucked a couple of rackets back to the stringer and uh, Sitsa Pass is just growing in confidence, isn't he? I mean, the serve plus Two one is just immense at the moment. I mean, he's really... Well, how impressive is this from him? You've got to be honest. I mean, he was completely out of this match and somehow able to win that third set. And, and as you said, John, it now feels like a match. Well, we've talked to it a lot about it through Nadal's career, the conditions, particularly at somewhere like Roland Garros, where a lot of the time, of course, 
when it's hot, he is almost unplayable. It's actually been better for a lot of players when it's been a cool, damp day on those clay courts at Roland Garros. And that's why it's so significant now with the drop of temperature here in Melbourne, just making things perhaps just a, a little bit easier for Sitsipas. This match coming back towards into a place where he can win it. Let first in service. If you just think about that possibility for a second, just dwell for a second, not long. Can you imagine if Nadal played as well as he played for the first two and a half sets and didn't win this match? Well, that forehand down the line just looks like it's got a little bit more on it. But again, it could be just a bit of an illusion because of the conditions that it's skipping through a little bit lower now to Nadal, who's just finding it harder to to time it and therefore having to put a little bit more spin on it because the ball's lower, can't flatten it out as much. Yeah, and Sitsabas is making contact with it lower, so he's driving through it even more. He's more comfortable at that height. So, of course, will prove to be more effective for Nadal as time goes by if the ball is coming through him. lower, just staying down. He'd have loved this overhead in the third set tiebreak, wouldn't he? It was a similar one, actually. Yep, he didn't hit that one particularly cleanly either. But it went in. Is scintillating from Sitsipas. Well, it takes one of those lower percentage flat Keep backhands in. across court with angle to open the door here in this point. He, he has to take a risk, and he's, he's seeing the ball so well now that he's prepared to do it. That was incredible. Set up this easy forehand. And there is a small window now. Is there any physical change in Rafa, Colin? Do you know what? I'm just starting to look at him and wonder. You know, what are we now? 2 hours 36. Definitely not as fresh at the start. Obvious thing to see when he was skipping around. Had complete control of the match. For the first time now, it really feels like it's about some top. What a serve. What a delivery that is. combination of things isn't it we've mentioned the, the drop in temperature so the ball is not getting as much bang for his buck but possibly just tiring slightly he is a human after all what a serve yes. it's a pass if you've ever watched him over the years certainly sees balls touching the line very differently to uh, how Hawkeye sees it in general or the umpire on a clay court. So no great surprise, that's his reaction. Has a biased point of view sometimes? Yes. I think there's a bit of that in all of us. 
I'm not going to disagree tend to with hope, you. You tend to hope it's out. Just gonna to touch long. Nada. And it is a paramount importance that he keeps making the dial feel under pressure in these returning games. Cannot allow him to feel relaxed at all. He's done a good job of that at the start of the fourth, hasn't been quite able to get that elusive break. But he's close. That's another huge Nadal. hold from that end from Nadal. Nadal. Just edges in front, 3-2 in the fourth. This is a really interesting period in this fourth set now for me. This. It, it now feels like Sitsabas is on top of the balance of play. And it feels like it's possible for him to win this match again. That can all turn, though. Big two, three games coming up. <laughs> Gee, that was ambitious, though. Miss hit from Rafa that was always going to bounce high there. That one hander, and he still stepped in and wailed at it. Did Sitsipas. He's using the forehand down the line, I think, uh, Colin, better than he than he has. I, I, I don't know whether the, he's hitting it with more penetration or whether Rafa's not looking for it as much or if there's a he's a fraction slower out to that forehand. I'm not sure, but it seems to me Sitsipas is really using that ball better now than he did earlier. Yeah, and I think prior to him hitting those forehands as well, he's making better decisions that mean he's getting more of them. And he's really accelerating down the line from a comfortable heading height, which is helping him. Again, uh, I mean, don't want to overplay the conditions, but I really think they're making a difference here. That ball, again, waist height, especially with the grip he has on the forehand, it's, you know, not the most extreme, so... Quite likes the ball down at waist height, accelerate through it. He's making Nadal stretch more, isn't he? Yeah, Penetrating yeah, with the forehand best. wing. It's getting Sweet interesting, himself. fellas. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming together for City Pass right now. As Colin says, the conditions also just uh, Nadal feeling as though the conditions aren't allowing him to play the way that he wanted to. And the level of belief that we're seeing from the 22-year-old as well. Said there's been an adjustment there from Sitsipas. You know, 
willing to take more backhands, neutral backhands down the line. And that's been the one when Nadal goes cross. If he doesn't get enough on it, he's hammering that forehand down the line. So for me, one of the adjustments he's been able to make. Ultimately, that's because the conditions are stopping Nadal from being as effective as he was in pushing Tsitsipas back and off the court and creating space for him. He's not winning as many points with the same approach, with the same style of play, Rafa. And maybe he's getting to the stage where he might need to just try something a little different. He's, he's almost getting out hit at the moment. Save that, and he he knows he's in a bit of trouble here, Rafa. He's going to have to produce something special to fend off uh, Sitsipas at the moment, and this is about as special as you can get. is that 14. 14. it's almost as if he feels if he doesn't go for broke he might be in a bit of trouble but when he goes for broke there's more margin on it uh -oh. I'm not sure if he knows that that's the violation for him or if he thought it was for Rafa. Surely he heard his own name then. No, because he heard time, because he asked for about a time violation, which would have been on Rafa, not on him. But the umpire did use his name. I didn't hear anything there, guys, in, in terms of coaching. Maybe yeah. a signal. Yeah, no, initially he said, Colin, uh, coaching warning sits a pass. Yeah, I just mean in terms of what the, the coaching warning could have been for. I, I didn't hear anything shouted down from his team, whether it was a signal that the umpire saw or I'm not sure what it was. But, yeah, definitely a coaching warning there. is a frustration though. How good is his movement up to that and it needed to be that would have been a difficult volley had he not moved as swiftly onto it. Watch Nadal here, sensing the opportunity, just keeps moving. And that ever reliable backhand short angled volley.
Jones coming. He keeps applying pressure. Yeah, you can, and you can just feel it building, catcher. He, this is uh, the crux of this third, oh, excuse me, this fourth set now. He looks fresh too. Unbelievable. Well, we are seeing everything. Well, that's gutsy because uh, we've talked change. about that Another. part of his game, Mark, and that's the one he doesn't want to go for as much, and he normally won't go for this second serve under huge pressure. Was there a slight miss hit on that serve? I think there was, but he made it. Gutsy. Yeah, maybe 90% clean. But, yeah, you've got to give him credit. That was uh, clutch. Let First service. Great awareness as well. We saw it at the start of the match how he was moving his serve around, keeping Tsitsipas guessing, but to do it when it matters most. That's what separates these players in general. What a significant hold of serve that may well prove to be for Rafael Nadal. Epic adventure. He comes through it and he leads 4-3. Oh, and he turns around a point he looked destined to lose. Well, you wouldn't think you'd get hurt so much by that approach, but it is a bit like going across court to a right-hander and giving them a, a forehand. I mean, Nadal's backhand hurts you a bit like a, a right-hander's forehand can when they run and swing at it. He can hit it with such power that you really have to approach down the line to the forehand, really. This is awesome, really, isn't it? I mean, I mean, both players here. If you, these are the best players in the world. What a pleasure to watch this. Some of the tennis they're producing now in front of no crowd. Thank goodness the crowd's coming tomorrow because we don't want to waste this sort of stuff without them. They're still good on TV. Holy smoke. Well, a couple of points where they produce shots that looked impossible, but by the end looked inevitable. That's how good they are at the moment. by the sheer pace. It's a pass forehand now is the ground shot that's in charge of this match. First two sets, it was Nadal's forehand and backhand. Winners coming from everywhere. Now it's the Greek star's forehand. think that's because Nadal's ball is more in Tsitsipas's hitting Four zone now on. because of the change in climate. Because it's cooled down a bit, the ball's not jumping off the surface as much, I and, think, and it's in his hitting zone. Yeah, I think it's significant enough um, that that's having an impact. It's a misconception, as Mark uh, described so well earlier, that Nadal 
the best clay court player of all time is better on slow courts. It's, it's not about that. For me, it's about the lively conditions. There's so much top spin. If it's not lively, the spin can just drop the ball short and, and leave it sitting there to be attacked. And he can't get it out of the hitting zone as much now against it's a pass who's, you know, granted elevated his level. <laughs> Another example in that point, there was a good high heavy ball Lovely. in the first two sets. He was doing the damage for Nadal. It's a pass is able to, you know, stay toe to toe with him now and then do more damage because he's got that flatter hit when he gets a ball to attack. And it, it, don't get me wrong, guys, it's a pass is playing unbelievable here. It's not just a case of the conditions have changed, he is timing the ball a dream. Well, his defence has been remarkable and he's got all the encouragement in the world to stay yeah, in these rallies okay. now, whereas before perhaps he felt like he needed to do more in those situations. Getting the ball back to a decent length is actually working out very nicely. Can he extricate himself from another tricky situation here, Nadal? And again, we see the multi-layered ways that he can actually hold on to his serve. Serve and volley from him there. How many players would have done that in that situation? Especially when you're gulping in the oxygen too after a elongated rally, that the rally before. Two of the best players in the world battling it out on one of the great stadium courts in the world. Doesn't get much Don't better than this. Did it remind you of the, the one he took in the air in the tiebreaker when he, in retrospect, probably should have let it bounce like this? Smart play. Crashes the smash away for a winner. That must have missed by a whisker. Maybe a week's growth of whiskers. <laughs> In my dreams. Three hours. Not too many people would have bet this would have gone past two hours, the way Nadal was playing. Advantage, Nadal. Another massive serve this time off the first serve and again just the courage to do the right thing
Marius. No question that the conditions have altered the terms of engagement out here for both players. Shifted to the advantage of Sitsipas. Such has been the splendor of his tennis. That stands out as a rare error. Gee, that's pushing the boundary, though, isn't it? It's a fine line between your best shot and then just missing. Really went for something extraordinary there. Sorry, Colin, go, mate. No, I'm just going to say the pressure really does feel like it's building out here. Nadal is digging so deep. Can he get through another game here? It's, uh, it looks to me like Sitsipas is the one that's energised. He's on his toes, Nadal is. He's on the ropes here. These last two service games, he's been pushed to the limit. Though We thought that last one was pivotal. No more so than this. Oh, my goodness. That's interesting. Because that's bread and butter right there. You rarely see him miss a ball this easy. No one is completely immune to pressure, though, are they? Even the great ones. They generally find a way to get through it. Yellow that sits a pass is a fraction fresher. And if he can if he can squeeze this set, he might start well at least equal favourite, maybe maybe favourite in the fifth. A lot of ifs in there. Nadal fails with, and it is the ultimate triumph for Sitsipas as he breaks. First break of the night for Sitsipas. He's up against one of the game's great boomerang returners, a man that breaks so often when he's been broken. Oh. Well, Nadal's absolutely convinced this is out. How gutsy is that from Sitsipas, though? Just missed a similar forehand in the first point of this game, and then the, the guts to go for it again and find the outside of the line. Magnificent. That's the play, isn't it? The one, he, if he can open up that side of the court, his forehand is good enough at the moment he's so confident with it that he, he'll knock a lot of these balls off great first serve opens the court up
To to pass right on the cusp of leveling up this contest. Last of the men's quarterfinals. Game and to a fifth and deciding set we go. Incredible achievement for Sitsa Pass. If this set goes longer than 58 minutes, can we get the fans back in? <laughs> I'm pretty confident that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> They will be flooding back in tomorrow, though. Fitzy, weren't you confident that Rafa was going to win this at two sets to love as well, though? Oh, I was at two sets to love, yes. <laughs> Anything's possible. Fitzy's. I've heard that a few times this uh, fortnight. Job as a fortune teller was <laughs> short lived. Well, we did talk eight. about the odds. You picked Rafa slightly. I thought 50 50 because I'm good at sitting on a fence. But it's playing out pretty close to what we thought. Let's <laughs> first service. It's interesting to see in the previous point, Sitsa Pass missed the return, but Nadal was serving volleying. Is he going to look to come forward more and shorten points? Well, if he does, that's an indication that he's worried from the back of the court. You know, that rarely happens to this man. He, he normally dominates opponents from back there. control of the forehand because he's trying to push it so close to the baseline to keep it to pass quiet. Game's important, and that a big one to get himself up and running at the start of the fifth. Thank you. A thing or two about tennis, Neil Fraser. Just to watch Rafa just manage everything that he can out there 
and accept the challenge on offer with the different conditions. He's moved himself significantly forward again here and again. Another indication of just how much life has gone out of the conditions and the court and the ball because he's able to be where he, he was at the start of the match, but actually the ball was bouncing so much higher that he actually shifted back. Interesting shot for me in that 15 love point. Rafa was able to get round and hit the inside out forehand from inside the court. It felt like a shot we were seeing with regularity the first two sets. And even backhands from inside the court, cross court, really hurting sets of pass. But the patterns have changed. He's been hitting many more. You know, defensive balls like that. It's, it's a pass hitting with purpose into the backhand corner. And well, we've talked about it. Anything weak cross court is getting punished with the forehand line. So take advantage of the conditions to change the flow of the match. And he, he, I can't help thinking sits a pass looks a little better physically here. 100%, John. 100%. He's yeah. still got a spin in his step. I think Nadal has he just lost. He's a younger man, Colin. He is, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's natural, isn't it? Nadal just possibly lost a little bit of pop in his ball. Still trying to hit big. But Tsitsipas, of course, is energised by having won the last two sets. It's amazing what that will do for you. The mind is a, a, a powerful thing. And when you've got the momentum, you've got the adrenaline, and you, you, you often feel a lot fresher, don't you? a difficult ball there must have been part of him that wondered whether it was going to go yeah. long i thought it was an out ball it looked like it was going to carry long from this angle made sure of it He's removed a bit of paint with that one. And it needs to be that good at the moment. If he can't go through him, he's going to go around him. Predictable outcome is not an argument for inaction. He continues to search for solutions. <laughs> well, it looked like he was going backwards, but he very much was going forwards when you looked at the outcome there. Wow, this was huge. Created space for a winner where it didn't look as though there was some. <laughs> Serve and volley again. again. He's having to do it all out here, Nadal, you to keep his please. opponent quiet. 2 1 in the fifth.
allow 15. Well, I guess the, the question is here, and a little bit like you were alluding to earlier in the match, Fitzy, is that it's difficult to play perfect tennis for, for two hours as Nadal was, and suddenly he didn't play quite as well. Same question, really, to sit to pass right now. Oh, mistake, Rafa. You can see his reaction. It was open down the line. It was. He's hit that ball. I don't know a million times down the line. Why would he hit a lob here? Well, he overthought it, didn't he? I think so. And that's what happens when things get complicated. Telling to me when a player changes tactic, you have to have that in your repertoire. But when you do it, it's almost an indication that you're not winning the way you want to play. He threw in a high one there off the forehand deliberately early in the point, tried to mix it up a little bit, Rafa, and still got out hit. That's that's a mini mental victory there for Sitsipas. But a lot easier to hit that forehand at 15 all than love 30 which it should have been. And it really has been a blend tonight, hasn't it? Tsitsipas playing great on some of the huge points that we've had, and Nadal just coming up a little bit short. Another game that goes by for Nadal, where he might have just been asking what might have been. Yeah, hit. The longer this goes now on an even keel into the fifth set, the more the chances are that Nadal, Nadal can actually lose this now. What do we say? Will this be... One of those moments in a young player's career. A telling come from behind victory. It's possible now. After three and a half hours, they are still able to entertain us royally. That's true. That's true. I feel like the king sitting here watching this. A special treat.
That is so good. <laughs> yeah. In your dreams, did you ever feel you could play as well as this? Not even in my dreams. Not even in your dreams. <laughs> Certainly not in reality and not even in my dreams. Not in your wildest dreams? Because in my wildest dreams, I did think I could play like this, but uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. This your wildest it. dreams were about playing tennis? <laughs> this, is in, this is incredible stuff. That forehand is as good as it gets. <laughs> And we think it's just the norm right now. This deserves to go down to the wire. Got a feeling the doll feels like it has. Come on. Repetitive brilliance from both these two players. What a game this is turning out to be. The quality of ball striking out of this world. He sits a pass. He's in the zone here. You know, he's hit out the whole way, hasn't he? Gone for his shots, and now he just believes he's going to make them all. This is literally seeing a tennis ball like a football. Awesome. Game. And then Nadal responds with another ace, his 14th of the match, and his serve has kept him in it. What a contest, what a battle. 3 2 in the fifth. 15 left. These are new balls, aren't they? I think so. Well, they're going fast through the air, fast and furious, helping the server at this moment. 14 left. Yeah, just one game old. Well, they look pretty new right now, don't they? Hitting his spots relentlessly. Game in City Bus. Four in a row. Three games on. That is not much of a respite for Nadal. He just came through a bruising encounter. And Sitsipas draws level in yeah. just 54 seconds. Yeah, that helps Sitsipas's cause, not just in the scoreline right there. of the coin right now. Let for service.
He's swinging as hard as he can virtually at every ball here, and they're all going in. That return was was just brute strength. Ran at the ball, crushed it, and then hits this. Can't play tennis better than that, can you? No. It's the Bermuda Triangle zone. Shots going in, never to be seen again. <laughs> the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> and the servant volley, ever thinking, is Rafa. 30. 15. Not just a pretty face. <laughs> Sitsipas doesn't want this to be a Pyrrhic victory, though. Watching Nadal have to change his style, serving and volleying higher balls, taking pace off. Special. It shouldn't perhaps have got to that awkward stage. But when posed the question, he answered it emphatically. Surely it's not as easy to hit a touch volley with these poly strings. But he does it. What control. which is the thing he's had a little of in the last two and a half sets. Let first service. Let first service. You know, there's some ball tosses from Rafa where you know it's going down the middle. You know, that, that one was low and out to his left a little bit. That, that was the only serve he could really hit there. Sitsipas was waiting on it. Four kilometer an hour ace solves the problem this time yeah, around for Nadal. Four three in the fifth. Out. He's made a career of those types of forehands in his own mind. That was very makeable. Suddenly racking up aces for fun here, Sitsipas. He's got about 13 Ks extra on his forehand compared to Nadal's in this fifth set as well. There's an example of it. That, that is no simple shot. He's picking them off like cherries. Look, if, if we hit one of those in five sets, we'd be really happy, wouldn't we? Maybe one a week. I'll be lucky. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, he just returns the compliment. Four
you just feel like it has to go to a tiebreak and there will be a point or two in it. It's, that's just the way it feels. Remains to be seen. Let First in service. The beauty of live sport. Well, a contest that started after really a set and a half to seem as though it was fading Four, hopes yes, for Stefano Tsitsipas, but it's soaring dreams right now for the fifth seed. Getting towards the culmination of what has been just a wonderful effort from him. For all, fifth set. The old adage of serving first still stands tall, though, for me. It seems a, well, maybe an advantage that is in your mind, but I think it's there. Fourteen eleven. Well, statistically, it would suggest that it is only in your mind doesn't seem to matter but as you say psychologically when you're standing out there serving to potentially go up five four in the deciding set it feels significant and that's exactly where Nadal finds himself right now he scores with the forehand down the line and he indeed sits down five four up in the fifth As for Sitsipas, this is uh, about to become the fourth longest match of his career in terms of time. He had a, a five-hour-plus match against Stan Vavrinka at Roland Garros back in 2019. Not sure he needs to play that at this stage. That's out of nowhere, that drop shot. And I'm, I'm confident he won't use that again. He's hitting the ball so well from the back of the court and winning points on his serve. That's a risk I don't think he needs to really take now the way he's hitting the ball. But hey, sometimes you make these split second decisions on the moment or in the moment. He's just letting it fly, isn't he, on the serve? Not thinking about it. Sits a pass, just free hitting. And as you'd expect, after nearly four hours, the, the, the returns can't be as energetic, surely. Missing a l uh, just a few more now, Rafa. Land for service.
Well, he's not out of danger yet here, sits a pass. Plenty of intent about that rally from Nadal. Yeah, right now, Rafa's is thinking, get it to juice. Get it to juice and let the opposition think about it. Because coming back from 40-15 down is, is a good place to be if you're returning serve. Too good, he deserves that game, Five, does Tsitsipas. The return was good, the backhand from Tsitsipas was exceptional. And from then on in, that was breathtaking. Well, it deserves to be decided by the breaker, doesn't it? He's got a quick turnaround. Serena on tomorrow afternoon. What a match that promises to be. How well the great American champion has played at this year's Australian Open. Love the team. Suboptimal start to this game for Nadal. Well, here we go, Mark. How many times has Rafa lost from two sets to Lover? Nope. 14. Just the twice, once at a Grand Slam, Fabio Fanini, 2015 at the US Open, of course, and all the way back in 2005 when the Masters 1000 tournaments were played over five sets in the final against Roger Federer. That tells you how significant this moment is. Three break points. Comeback almost complete for Stefanos Tsitsipas. He will serve for a place in the semi finals of the Australian Open. A final twist in the tail. Love 15. It's not beyond the realms.
Rafa just posing the question, just trying to get the ball back into play. Love and that. this time it was enough. Suddenly, sits a pass for the first time tonight, really, with something to lose. And again, the change in your own mind you can play havoc with your shot selection. How weird is competition sometimes? Hasn't looked like in this set losing his serve. He serves for it. That's love 30. Oh, he's missed it. He was there. Well, the first serve so crucial in this final set now for Tsitsipas. He's winning 86% of the points when he makes it just 43% when he hits a second. That will smooth the path to victory. Takes the racket out of Natal's hand. Oh, he's over 200 Ks now. He's pumped up. For what a performance this is. Match point. Well, because of Rafa's will, you always believe there's a way. Yes. And that defeat to Borna Choric at the US Open, having had six match points and having been up a break in the fifth set, will still be percolating around in Sissamas' mind at this stage. Nadal doing everything to make Sissipas earn this. And he waited, then he waited. Rafa had to gamble and go. If he was if he was gonna go, he had to go early out of that forehand wing. And Sitsipas held the forehand. Number two. of his wand and we're back to juice why are we surprised we're not <laughs> honestly thought the first serve was in i was surprised the call came it must have missed by a millimeter that's what separates Sitsipas from the semi-finals to be a twist there just had to be well he's taken every break point on offer tonight Nadal he's only had three of them but he's converted on a hundred percent of them if he maintains that record we're in a tie break Deep serve. Yes. Credit to Sitsipas. Breathing hard, but handling the situation. Wow, 
any volley was a good one over. Hard one thing. Since the pass was so deep in the court, Rafa chooses to hit the topspin volley out of the air. And he knows it was a dramatic mistake. Oh, Rafa's dreams disappearing. Third match point. semi-finals and produces six, one of the great six, comebacks of all time. Two, six, seven, six, six, four, seven, seven, seven.